All right, you're working. We're just sneaking up on you. <laughs> Hadn't heard anything for a while. Good thing you didn't come up for four minutes ago. <laughs> We are back at Jamie's shop. As you can tell by the smooth jazz going in the background again, we're gonna paint out some of these railings and he's gonna finish welding. <laughs> I think that's being played. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna start with these upside down to make sure we get the bottoms of everything really good and then we'll flip them right side up is our game plan. And we're gonna have to move that trailer. Yeah, it does Jamie threw some bad. trash in the, in the trailer over here and it smells like like roadkill. I think it's, exactly yeah, like roadkill. Really bad. Yeah. Might need to wipe these off real quick. There's a little dust just from sitting in the shop. Sorry about that. Oh, God. It is bad. <laughs> <laughs> We're using this acrylic lacquer spray paint, we'll call it, and it dries really fast, which makes this a lot faster for us because we can recoat right away. It's already dry. It says no recoat window, which is nothing to do with windows. It means that <laughs> if you read that, you're like, what? Why am I on windows? Don't recoat your window. No, it means you don't have to wait any amount of time to recoat it because it dries like instantly almost. So. Uh, with this, we're not going to have to do the usual clear top coat. Is that right? That's my plan. I've been searching for the perfect finish. I don't know if this is it, but my understanding is it is a color and a finish all in one. Okay. And it's interior, exterior, it's automotive. So if it can go on a motorcycle or a car, I think a handrail is okay. Yeah. And we have no affiliation with this stupid color or whatever, but Jamie says it's going to be the trick. We'll see. It does look good. It already does look good. Look yeah. at all the screen time it's getting. And uh, all the oh they yeah, us. wow, maybe they, they should. Duplicate colors. The Sponsor our video. <laughs> yeah, the sandblasting dust is all coming right this way. Yeah. So a good thing it does dry fast. Yeah. Something worth highlighting that I only buy spray cans that have a fan nozzle, and it's usually rotatable for you know vertical, horizontal. Yeah. The ones that just spray in a circle like or a cone. A cone. Nope. No way. And actually, the one paint I used to buy a lot, this black uh, satin I used to buy, they switched it. Mm. It used to be the, and now I have to find a different one because I use a lot of black satin. But maybe I'll just use this from now on. Uh, I can't get up in there. Can't get up in there? I can't get up in there. Huh. Do I think it compromises it? Uh, yeah. You may just have to hose it in there. I, let let oh, me see well, that I, thing. I, yeah, yeah, you do it. I don't <laughs> want to cause a run. You be the guy that causes a run. <laughs> oh, did you do it? No. Almost here. I think we're okay. Yeah. Ray and I are back over at the duplex and we're gonna scuff the stairs down with these little sanding pads that Jamie gets clings for. It's a 120, little soft thing because the grain is really raised up by that water-based finish. I mean, it feels terrible. Doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, it feels like sandpaper. So we're gonna scuff these down just lightly and then we'll get another coat on them so it feels smooth. That's the only way to really tell if you're done with this is just to feel it. Just feel it. That was definitely one of the most raised grain situations we've ever had as far as wood just needing a lot of sanding between coats. Um, so I don't know if it was this particular oak or what, but our pads are shot. Like we need new pads after one set of stairs there. So we couldn't quite get the tailgate shut with this in here and we're going about three quarters of a mile. We're just gonna let it ride. Go slow. Ray is so scared. Dude, <laughs> we're gonna go up that hill and all what of them hill? Are gonna go sliding up. The one that turn right and then you go up the it's hill. It's barely a hill. I'm not gonna let it fall <laughs> out, man. If you 
you're not worried about it, why are your, your emergency <laughs> lights on? <laughs> it's an emergency if we drop these railings. So I'm checking out this cove molding that Jamie bought this morning that's gonna go at the bottom of each tread to cover any little gap there. I'm gonna pre-paint it so that once it's installed, I can just pin nail it, it's done. But I'm gonna have to make some sort of jig to paint it. It won't lay flat because it's like a 45 and the surface I want is a top. Let's see what I can come up with. <laughs> So my jig is sort of working here, but this is still gonna take forever. So I'm just gonna get some tunes going and just brush these out. It's probably gonna take a good half hour or more. A really important thing I'm doing to make sure the surface of this has a good paint job is to brush the back of it. You can see after painting the surface, the back has this little lip around of paint <clears throat> and that's gonna basically keep it from going tight to the wall or tight to the cove it's going in. So I'm taking the brush and I'm brushing that smooth on the back side. But when I do that, <laughs> it kind of makes a little lip on the front side. So I gotta flip it back around after doing that and you can see Right there, what I'm talking about, that little bit of paint. And then I gotta hit that again on the front side. So this isn't as simple as it looks to get a nice paint job on one side of a surface like this. That's what it takes right there, every one of them. And then of course I'm just laying it on the ground. But it's nice clean gravel. We're at Arlo's place because we cannot find the pin nailer. And I know he's got one, but he's not here. Uh, good luck finding good luck. In here. <laughs> Oh, did he find it already? What? Oh, yeah, he did. Oh, yeah. my gosh. My wow. Bro. Well, if we need to make the video longer, I could look more. <laughs> I could look more. Yeah, we hadn't filmed much today that's any good. I haven't found it. Let's keep looking. Uh, uh, yeah, Arlo's got, like, the craziest workshop you ever seen. Look at this, though. Look, at, it's like, it's, like, co it's like, a, like a creepy old house theme over here. Cobwebs. Oh well. If anybody wants this structure, you can have it. You yeah, have Arlo's trying down. to get rid of this thing. You just gotta take it down. You yourself. just gotta take it down and get it out of here. It's like a rapture. Really? This Arlo's clothes are all right here. <laughs> Look, <laughs> he's just going. <laughs> it's like the rapture. He's just disappeared. His clothes just fell to the ground and he was gone. Thirty-nine, seven. Dude, do you know how much time they spent I know. on this staircase? I know. I'm... And then they're letting you just come in and hack up the trim? I'm kind of shocked myself that they're letting me do like the finishing touches. I mean, I'm doing a good job and I'm doing it really fast. That's... Dude. Yes. I mean, I'm like 30 minutes. I did this whole thing. Yeah. So... I mean, it looks like it, but that's good. <laughs> it looks good, but yes. After Arlo and Jamie spent weeks on this, they're letting me do the finishing touches. Yeah, that's... Incredible. You know, you've heard of six-minute abs. This is 30-minute trim with Eric Perkins. <laughs> they must have been really tired of these steps. Yeah, you going to paint them, too? I already painted them. I painted them before I put As them in. As is in, that's it? That's it. No. Yes. We're not... This is my trim yeah, job. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> Believe it. This video is brought to you by Element, and it's a tasty electrolyte drink mix that I love with everything you need and nothing you don't. 
And no joke, I keep a box of Element in my truck at all times. Element contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio, 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium, and no sugar. So you get a great tasting drink mix that hydrates you and not a bunch of sugar that's terrible for you like a lot of other drink mixes. If you didn't know, electrolytes facilitate hundreds of body functions, including the conduction of nerve impulses, hormone regulation, nutrient absorption, and fluid balance, and it just makes you feel a lot better when you're properly hydrated. And now that it's hot again, I can see the salt line on my hat from my sweat when it dries. That's why I always throw an element into one of my water bottles so I stay hydrated and I keep those electrolytes up so I feel good. An element has tons of great flavors and my favorite is the watermelon salt if you're wondering. And it's used by everyone from NBA to NFL to NHL players, even Olympic athletes. Right now, Element is offering my listeners a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or share Element with a salty friend. Make sure to get yours at drinkelement.com slash Perkins. And remember, it's only available through my link. That's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash Perkins. Thanks to Element for sponsoring our video. Let's get back to work. Last step of the stairs here, besides installing the railings, is this little piece of vinyl bullnose. <laughs> I've been cutting and whittling just with the utility knife just to get this notch perfect around this trim board. I'm gonna test fit it, and if it's good, I'm just gonna stick it down with some Lexel. Again, that's not advertised as an adhesive, but once it cures, it, it works great to stick stuff. So we'll do that, a little blue tape, maybe a couple pin nails, not sure. Here we go. We only have enough of this to um, do it, so I hope I didn't screw up. Oh, no, that's good. We are back on site this morning and I just recoded the top of these. Were you going to touch them? Yeah. Because so it was a little rough. You brought them outside, right? And Jamie wanted you to take them off. No, 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 no. Jamie was on the phone with me trying to tell me how to do it and <laughs> like where to set them and what grit sandpaper. By the time he was done talking, he didn't know it, but it was already done. <laughs> I like literally just scuffed it and then used the shield, did it in place. It took me like it looks great. three and a half minutes. Final handrail going in. Sorry, railing. This is not a handrail. Handrail is oh, the Yeah, right, right. It's a guard rail. I guess center up, center, center. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, oh. Okay. Hey ho. How's it look? Uh, well, it's touching yeah, it over. Well, I need to move way over down here. So Jason's gotten a lot better at spraying paint out of like a rattle can like this. You can see he's pss, 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 letting off the trigger and everything so you don't get blobs. What's, what's the key? What did you learn over the years working with us? Um, with spray paint? Yeah, yeah, rattle cans. I didn't know. I, before I would have just been like this. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even joking. Yeah. And what would that do? Yeah, when you stop here and it's like heavy, stop here, heavy. Yep. Exactly. So that's why you take your finger off and then go back. I'm yep. still not great at it. You're good. If Jamie's yeah. put you in charge. Yep. Well, ah. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, Jamie's got a new technique. <laughs> it's super weird. <laughs> Whoa. I'm installing these doorknobs and for whatever reason, every one of these latch plates, like this part will not go all the way into the routed out part on the jam. See that? Yeah. So what I'm having to do is take my drill and like drill a slot. Like, dude, that's not like your repertoire, is dude, it? Dude, that's what I'm doing. So I'm just like taking this thing and 
and some villain. It's kind of like that. It's a way to do it. All right, so I got a little slot made. And now, look at there. It goes all the way in. Dude. Wow, you are good at this. <laughs> I mean, we do give him crap, but he really is. He really does some of this stuff, and he does do a great job. What? I ain't gonna lie. What? Don't you think so? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not getting the pay raise, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there you go. <laughs> Maybe you just leave that in here. Uh, well, it might need it out there too. Huh. Maybe we should just put it back on. I gotta paint that in a second though. Yeah, no, I will leave it up. Jamie was down there filling all those pinholes with paint on the stairs. So, I'm buying you lunch again. <laughs> I told you he was gonna fill them, dude. You know well, I don't know. He technically he didn't fill them. He painted, he guess, painted them. You said you were gonna do anything to them. Right. Oh, out. I didn't do anything. So maybe I didn't lose. You paint every one of them? Yep. He just let the paint go in those little pin nail, pin nail holes. Mm. He's down there with a the brush like this wide. <laughs> he said I did a great job too. He did. Yep. 30, 30 minute train with Perkins. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm in a never-ending elevator right now. Yeah, that's exactly what it sounds like. Is that one song on repeat? You can change songs, you can like you? like it, don't you? No, it just flows one to the next, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Did you used to be in a band or something? Yeah, then I don't look like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's time to install these metal handrails, and there's a few things that I'm really concerned with. One, it has to be perfectly parallel to the existing railing that we put in, so when you sight across them and you line the two up like this, they look exactly the same. The second thing is, I don't want to scuff the wall up a lot, and this thing is kind of heavy and awkward shaped, and so when we hold it in place, I don't want to be dragging it up and down the drywall, because it's black, and the paint is white, and it's going to leave scuff marks everywhere. I've devised a way, I think, to make it easy. And what I've done is I cut some pieces of plywood that I'm going to rest it on that actually project perpendicular to the angle of the stairs and rest on the stair nosings. Now, I established that height by the rail that already is in there, so I had something to go by. Then it took three of us to hold this thing in place. Four would have even been better. It would be terrible to do it by yourself. We did one and it went okay, so let's show you how we're gonna do the second one. Our plywood spacers take care of the elevation up and down, but what about in the left and right direction? Well, I decided that I could use this laser and actually align it with the position of the skirt board that I want the bottom of the handrail to align to, and I'll have a line on the wall that I don't have to draw with a pencil or use any painter's tape, because a lot of times it'll peel the paint right off the wall, and this wall is already finished painted, so the least amount of damage we can do, the better. My favorite part really of these metal handrails is that at the return where the handrail goes back to the wall, it has like a bolt flange with four screws. So even if one of those screws misses or something like that, you still got a chance, three more tries to hit some blocking. And I actually missed one in here. Don't tell the homeowner, one of them missed, so I had to use an anchor, but the other one's hit, so don't worry, it's plenty strong. Out in the middle of the field, this thing is 15 feet long. I used four additional handrail brackets that you can just buy at the store, screwed them to the wall, screwed them into the bottom of the metal, and it's very strong. All right, I just got off the phone and I come to the guys and they're like, oh, we've been filming here. So yeah. I'm like, sorry about whatever it is you just watched. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, we got a lot of good footage. Okay. Um, quite a bit of me talking about stuff and explaining All you right. know, what I like about handrails. There's more, um, <laughs> but we don't have one of a handrail going in. Okay, though. that's what we need to that's do. That's what you need to film for us. Okay. We did one side, and actually it was exciting. <laughs> I wish we had filmed all of that one. Yeah.
All right. We learned stuff. Okay. And now this one's going to go real smooth. All right, I'm here. Let's do it. And we know that Jamie does, um, he works out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and does chest and back, buys and tries. We got his whole workout. Okay. Routine, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Pull down. Is this going in the house, uh, can, going to the house anywhere? Uh... <laughs> you need to step in and do some filming. I don't want him to hear me. But you need to step in. And... What are we doing? You got the laser out? All right. All right. Know, All right. Yeah, yeah. Know, yeah, now we got to figure it out. I'm aligning the laser right down here with the corner of the skirt board where I took my measurement for the length of the handrail. See that yeah, right there? I do see that. Okay, let me move it away. Boom, right there, vertical. Okay. And then what? Uh, well, at top and bottom, we're going to use these uh, spacers, I'll call them, and that's going to space us perpendicular from the stair nosing at the exact correct height to match this angle rail that we already So you're just going to set the handrail on that? You just set it on there. And screw it to the wall? Yes. Yes. Pretty, I like it. It's pretty good. Yeah, and we don't have to put a bunch of pencil lines on the wall, like you said. Yeah, that's no, one I mean, thing. I'm trying What's to... that? The handrail. <laughs> oh, yeah, we need the handrail. Hold your position. I got it. Come on. All the words. We the sound That's it right, right there. there yep. All right, I'm just going to put one screw. I'm actually going to do the bottom because... Right where my hand is? Well, no, I guess I'm doing top. Because <laughs> I actually didn't have a piece of blocking in the right spot. So good. And I'm the one that put it in there. And I put it everywhere, I thought. You know? So we'll find out. Ooh. That's nice. She hit. Now, I actually think we said something the day we we're installing the blocking that we skipped this little like triangle this big. Really? And I'm like, I bet that's the spot. Oh, that it's crazy. always the spot. You know it is. Um, Dude, look at your shadow. Whoa. What? Hey, that's pretty trippy. Wow. So for the viewers, what's the reason for this little flat run? Well, you might like to grab onto the handrail in some way before you take your first step down without like reaching down to get a hold of the handrail. So I thought, well, how nice would it be if it just had a little flat? Sure. Now, it is a lot of work to make this small feature, you mm -hmm. know, and, um, but I really don't like the way it would look if you took a straight run and just extended it yeah, on up. Yeah, it would get too high and look like it was just... It would just look very bad. So to yeah. me, this is the answer. Um, it looks nice. It does serve the purpose that it's designed for, and um, I like it. Mm -hmm. It does have this tiniest bit of sag overall, like maybe a quarter inch. So do you want to do one in the middle first to get it straight? Mm -hmm. Ready to grab it? Yeah. I don't think it needs any brackets. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, without brackets, it's, it's actually it's amazingly strong. It is. Without any brackets. I decided to go ahead and research the grip rail requirements again, even though we do this like every time we build a house. I don't mm -hmm. know why. Because one of the inspectors said, hey, your handrail doesn't really pass code, you know. But they said, well, let it slide. But actually, I knew that it did pass code. Okay. So I didn't say anything. It's at, <laughs> <laughs> it's at the limit of what is allowable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which is two and a quarter of an inch diagonally through a rectangular shape like okay. this. Yeah. That's exactly what this measures. Okay. And no, I think it feels good. No greater than six and a quarter in the circumference. Okay. Or the perimeter, the outside. Yeah. And an inch and a half minimum space off the wall. Four and a half maximum off the wall. Okay. So you got so inch and a half, all fits three and a half. It yeah. all works out. And it feels really nice. I mean, if you have like really tiny hands, that might be a little large, but you could still grab it. If anything, I wish it was yeah a tiny bit smaller, but this is the only common size I can buy. Yeah, a one inch by one inch two would would be too small. Like one by one and a half might be good. Yeah. But this this looks so good. It does. And it passes. Well, that's nice to have four hands, isn't it? I mean, it's <laughs> doing it by yourself, that's for sure. It can be done. Since Jamie was saying the codes for the grip on this rail size, the other code we're following here is the height has to be between 34 and 38 inches off of the nosing to the top of this, I believe. Is that right? I believe that is correct. I know it's 34 and 38, but I, I'm only 90% sure it's to the top. <laughs> so that's, that's the set of codes we're following. There are a lot of codes when it comes to these uh, handrails going upstairs for safety. Ooh, she broke. You stop it.
How's she feel? Dude, she is... 